Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'll be talking about Dynamic Apex. Uh, so as a part of that topic, I'll be talking about uh, Apex Describe information. So if you have worked with Apex, you might know that you know uh, you can describe your S objects using tokens or by describe S object schema method, right? So now token is something, it's a lightweight, serializable reference to an S object, okay, or a field, you can say, uh, which often gets uh, validated at the compile time instead of runtime. Um, so, and if, and the other hand, if you look at the describe uh, S object methods, uh, so these are the method in the schema class that performs describes on one or more S object types. Right. So let me show you in a code what I meant by that. So let me go to the, the developer console. I'm going to use anonymous window. Uh, doesn't matter. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll create a S object. Okay. And I'll say S ob equals to, we're going to say new contact. Yeah. And we can say, um, so, so it's so if I say if s dot s object sorry dot get s object type yeah um, equals to um, uh, contact dot you know s object type um, then it just Uh, then you can print something system dot uh, system dot debug and just say contact yeah All right so this is like I'm actually verifying if this generic s object is of a contact type so you can do that um, um. Uh, what's up? Mm. Uh, let me see what's wrong here. Let me see. Hang on a second. Um, that works, no problem. And what about this one? So if I do this. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I just, sometimes it could be a typo, it could be something else. Yeah. Okay. So that explains the problem here, right? It is a typo. Right? Because I missed out one T right so we got this here now let's look at the debug right it's a contact so that's fantastic so uh, that's pretty cool um, now we can use uh, the the s object described uh, for this uh, contact object so like I t mentioned that you know I mentioned about the describe uh, s object method right in the schema class so what I'll do, so since it's a part of a schema class, so I'll do um, schema, right? Um, I will say dot describe. Oh, no, intelligence works. That's cool. S object result. And I will say SR. And I can say contact uh, dot S subject type dot get describe. Um, that's cool. So this is fantastic, right? Now, what I'll do, um, let me run this to show you the result, right? Um, SR and you see, this is what you get. The schema describe 
get associated entity, you know, yada, yada, yada. So you must be saying what the heck it is. So we got the record type. All right. So what I'll do, uh, so this kind of information um, might be a little bit, hmm, you would say, uh, it's not really helping. Okay, that's cool. So what I'll do, I will uh, go back and I'll do one more stuff here. Um, so, ooh. so we got this described, right? So this this doesn't make much sense, right? Uh, as I've already demonstrated using the the system dot debug, I intentionally did it just to give you context, right? So you must be thinking, mm, I'm not getting really the information I wanted. Okay, so what I'll do, so I I got the um, so I'll chain this for for a second, okay, and. What I'll do, I will do schema hopefully, dot s object type s object type dot contact m dot fields dot name. Okay. Now let's see system. Okay, now let's see the result. Um, all right, that's right. Now because we are not dealing with object here, so it has to be uh, describe field result. Okay, now we're gonna do the result. So you get all of this, uh, the names, you know, information around uh, the label name. You get, you know, the f um, so it's kind of truncated it. So that's that's fine. So now what I'll do. I'll just go here and I will do this sr dot get s object. Uh, now you must be wondering why this guy is showing all of this stuff, right? The reason why I wanted to show you all of this stuff, this is something Salesforce offers, right? As a part of your Dynamics Apex. Okay, so you wanted to get a field information in the runtime, you wanted to uh, write a generic qu qu query, right? Using token or describe method, you can do that using this approach. So I'm just showing you the capability of each and every stuff, so that would be useful for you if you if you are uh, if you're going to in this route. Um, so we go here, and you see we got the name. Okay, so this is like an account uh, dot name. So we got a lot of fields in account, right? So let's say, um, um, so let's say I'm gonna go here and field a relationship, and I'm just gonna go the account number, right? So I'm actually dynamically getting, uh, you know, uh, the account. Sorry, not the account. Actually, sorry, I'm not in a account, right? Uh, I've worked with accounts so much this today, so just well, I'm thinking about account today, so sorry, my apologies. Um, I got a contact. Uh, so I was going to choose the okay account ID, right? Let's choose account ID just to make it simple. All right, let's run it and see what we get. So you got a count ID, right? So you're dynamically accessing a field, right? Uh, using schema. That's exactly what we're doing. We are not actually doing account, you know, give me account dot something, right? We are actually using the schema to, you know, get it. Um, so this is like if you wanted to access a field information, the runtime, you can do that, 
uh, or, you know, or, you know, so if you are building a, say for instance, you know, where I see this useful, if you might, if you ask my opinion, I've done something similar where I wanted to get uh, the field name in the runtime, right? Without, you know, passing it, uh, you know, pre, pre hard coding it, right? It just pass a dynamic, uh, you know, field list and then works through it. So in that perspective, this is very, this is very handy for me. Right. Um, so, yeah. And also you can also do uh, the queries. Uh, you can also get the database queries of, let's say, S object S equals to, let's say, select um, last name from contact. Um, let's say uh, limit one, right? I just wanted to, for the sake of it, and you can say, um, so you can uh, pretty much say, if I wanted to know, uh, if this comes from a contact, so you can pretty much do you know, system dot debug. Uh, I can do you know, s dot um, get s object type. Um, oh man. as usual, my spelling mistake. Um, oh yeah. that's pretty interesting. Some reason it didn't run. Do I have? All right, now it's gonna run. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so it's a contact. So now I might have a generic query. Okay. So you know, uh, on this S subject. So if I wanted to say, if I'm building a kind of a um, a so-called parser, right? then I can use something like this and they say, oh, if it's a contact, do this. If it's a contact, do that. I've seen some of the framework, you know, on the Apex framework, use similar kind of approach. So this is good to know, right? I mean, if, you know, the capability uh, of a describe object, what is capable of. So now S object has this method. You can use this to, you know, do whatever you want to do. And you can also compare, you know, uh, if this uh, equals to, um you know the the contact so if i say if like i demonstrated before uh if this uh dot get object type equals to contact dot a subject type then you can do you know something similar like that which is pretty cool um now if you wanted to uh get uh just an information about a contact, you can always do schema dot describe object result equals to schema dot s object type dot account so or contact or or opportunity. It will give you information around um, uh, your specific uh, s object. So this is, I mean, I'm not sure how, you know if they're gonna ask you too many questions around it, but it's good to know, right? So describe s object result. Right, it's it's a class which contains a lot of methods like it contains fields, it contains field set, you know, get child relationship, um, you know, um, get key prefix, get interfaces. So, I will highly encourage you to go through it and you know just see if you if you're interested to know. They won't query you to the details, but it's good to know if you're dealing with advanced Apex because this is a platform developer too, right? So, you have to know a little bit around this on this context. And then you have a method like is accessible, uh, is a custom one, right? Is uh, un, um, uh, is queryable, right? Which is um, the re the is queryable is pretty interesting. I've used it, right? So this actually, so uh, that actually looks for um, whether this object can be queried by a current user. So that's that's is queryable. I'm just telling you what I've used, right? And I find it useful, right? When I wanted to build something generic around Apex. So this is might be overwhelming for you, might be uh, you know you might be uninterested, but from an exam point of view, you need to know this a bit around this kind of things, right? Um, so that's pretty much I wanted to cover. So we're going to talk about more about dynamic Apex in, in the coming lectures. Right, because it's important, and I believe that if you wanted to be a great 
um, Apex developer or Salesforce developer, you need to understand the real stuff going inside the, within the Apex, right? Just knowing batch, a queue, or you know, if and else interfaces is just not good enough. You need to understand the if you wanted to understand the core capability of an of a system, right? You need to understand what's going what's go goes on under the hood, right? So, um, so this is one of the uh, great way you can do uh, dynamic Apex. And at times, you might find it very useful. So that's all I wanted to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you have an amazing Tuesday. Adios.